So, yeah, so more about the program now, Doctor of Medicine program. It's a four year, a uh, full time program, a graduate entry. Um, as Phoebe mentioned, we have campuses um, in Sydney and Fremantle. Um, we've actually just opened a new campus uh, in Broome on the West Coast here starting this year. Um, and it, the study mode is, is on campus um, and they're full, uh, actually one year courses, but we start in semester one, usually around about the 17th of January or thereabouts. Um, um, the fee type I'll leave for the international um, team to, to address, but as Phoebe already mentioned, we've got small cohort sizes. We believe in small group learning and, and adult centered learning where we do have um, anywhere from you know eight to ten, um, twelve at the at the outset in those groups, um, and that's what we call problem based learning. And I'm more than happy to go into that if anyone's not familiar with that style of pedagogy. Um, we do have a focus on social justice, bioethics, and and the rural and indigenous health pathways, um, and we are fully accredited by our um, accrediting body here in Australia, which is the Australian Medical Council. Uh, next slide, please, in. Um, so the Doctor of Medicine program is split into, as I said, it's a four-year program. The first two years are what we call, we used to call preclinical, uh, we now call that foundational. So they're foundational years before you move into your clinical years, which are in year three and year four. Um, the focus there is, is the problem-based learning. So that's that's learning with your peers. So it's peer-to-peer -peer learning and you do have a, um, a faculty staff member in there as well, but their job is to facilitate rather than to didactically teach. Um, clinical skills is, is taught from the outset, from year one, from semester one, um, and we have purpose-built facilities on both campuses for those. Um, and our science labs are also taught in-house on campus, both on the West Coast here in Perth and also in Sydney um, in New South Wales. Um, and students do start taking some clinical visits. Um, they look slightly different depending on which side of the the, the coast you're on, um, but they start within year one. I know here in, in Perth, in WA, for example, we have um, a drug and alcohol visits and um, aged care placement visits. Um, and then we do things like GP visits, um, radiology visits and uh, other visits in, in, in year two. Um, and with that, am I handing over to you now, Chris? Next um, slide, thanks, Em. I think so. Oh, or are we looking at the day in the life of a first year student now? Sorry, I think, um, yeah, it will be over to Chris. Um, next slide. Ah, right. Thank you. So this is a slightly old version of the foundation years timetable, but I thought I would speak to this one because this is from the Sydney campus. Um, and this is just a little bit of a glimpse at the structure, at the uh, intensity, I suppose, of medical school. And you can see it's five days of the week. It's not necessarily every hour of the day, but it's a significant portion of the day for lots of students. It is a pretty sort of busy time. Uh, some of these details, this is a timetable from a couple of years ago, so some of the details have changed but the general vibe, the general sort of intensity of the training is um, uh, continuing. Uh, the thing to sort of think about at this stage is that it's on campus, it's with your peers, it's engaging sort of with your ideas. There's a lot of lecture content, but quite a lot of this stuff on these slides is in those small groups with your fellow students, doing labs, doing BCS learning, doing, um, problem-based uh, discussions and thinking. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the next slide. Um, so one of the components of the um, Doctor of Medicine program, both in Sydney and in Fremantle, is the bioethics program. This is run here in Sydney by a very lovely guy who's just taken over named Dr. Stephen Style. This is his sort of like research area, his area of expertise. And this is um, a program that where we try to get to the core of what we do here in Notre Dame and what is a differentiator, I hope, for us, which is to create doctors who aren't just technically skilled, but doctors who have the capacity to think reflectively, intelligently and thoughtfully about the challenges of being a doctor in our current society. 
And so uh, Phoebe's flagged that this is a Catholic medical school, but I was in a meeting the other day with our new Dean of Medicine, and she was talking to some lovely people from Canada, actually, who were saying, we're a medical school in a Catholic university. So we're not here to push Catholic values and to teach Catholic perspectives on uh, bioethical questions, but to encourage you to engage with these questions thoughtfully and reflectively, and with those emphases, emphases on social justice, on um, quality of care, on patient-centeredness, on the sort of values that we try to instill in our medical graduates. Um, you'll learn more a bit about that um, sh should you sort of commence with us in the program. It's not every week or every day that you do bioethics here in Sydney, at least. It's um, in discrete chunks throughout the year and a little bit uh, weighted towards that first year of the program. Uh, Paul, is there anything you'd like to add about bioethics? Uh, no, I think that's covered it. And the, uh, at the moment, our bioethics program, we do um, two half-day workshops in semester one and two half-day workshops in semester two, currently in year one. And then year two, um, we have another, a number of uh, panellists, which are really interesting. Um, they unpack complex questions like the beginning of life, the end of life, um, and various other, you know, complex issues uh, around that. And there's a theologian and a, um, a, a scientist and a clinician on those panels, and they're yeah, they're really, really well attended. Um, but that's here in the in in the West. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Paul. Oh, yeah, we get some really interesting presentations on topics that you might not put into that bioethics category uh, instinctively. So I watched a very interesting presentation uh, in the Sydney program last year that was on uh, the ethical impact and influence and ramifications of uh, the ways in which aid is provided in developing nations. So that was a very interesting um, presentation. There's a lot of complexity there that I hadn't actually thought about before. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, Em. Uh, I think this is still me, or is this you, Paul? <laughs> I don't mind. I think either, either of us can take that, but you're you're happy to take it if you like. Um, well, it might be something that we should both speak to because there's a little bit of a distinction between the way the clinical placements are structured and organized in a very practical sense between the Sydney of free mental programs. And this is sort of a result. And I think it's probably quite uh, similar in Canada. We have a federal healthcare system, but then we have our state based health systems which have their own sort of laws and regulations and ways of doing things and their own works. Um, and so in across both of those, however, for the accreditation of the programs, uh, our medical students are required to get uh, certain types of exposure to certain types of patient, to certain types of clinical experience assessed in certain you know, competencies. And so in years three and four of the program, you're moving out of the uh, for the most part, out of the small group, little classroom, out of the PBL and into the clinical settings. In New South Wales, that means you get attached to a clinical school. That could be uh, St. Vincent's Hospital across the road, as uh, was shown on the slide earlier. Then we've got clinical sites out in um, uh, Hawkesbury at Auburn, and there's also a Melbourne Clinical School. Uh, that a lot of our international students in particular are very interested in going to the Melbourne Clinical School, partly because it gives you a new city uh, to experience. And I uh, quite like Melbourne, so I think it's a good choice. Um, and so when you're on that across uh, year three, across year four, there's a range of set uh, clinical placements that you experience. And so you're going into a hospital or into a community clinic. It could be a public hospital. It could be a private hospital. And you're getting exposure. You might do a, you know, a six or eight week rotation in uh, internal medicine. You might that might be at an oncology clinic, or it could be on a, a different type of ward. Uh, you'll do a surgery rotations. You'll do um, uh, some type of community rotation in there as well. Sometimes that's a GP rotation, but there's lots of different types. There's palliative care. Uh, there's drug and alcohol rehabilitation clinics that fall under that um, uh, community label. There's a really interesting new community rotation across the road at St. Vincent's in um, uh, 
uh, community-based uh, clinic for sort of disadvantaged populations where they're trying to do care outside of the hospital in interesting ways. So some of our students have been going with um, uh, Aboriginal health care teams and actually doing some community visits. It's been really interesting. Um, and there's um, back to base days is when one day a week in each of those clinical years, you come back onto campus and you have a little bit of that classroom time. You reconnect with your peers directly and you'll do some lectures, some studying, a bit of journal club and make sure you're staying grounded in those sort of core uh, sort of academic disciplines alongside the sort of clinical exposure and clinical training. And so in the Sydney side, there's probably a separate slide on this. It's very uh, clinical school based, but in Fremantle, I think it's more health system based generally, Paul. Yeah, that's right. And I think the next two slides unpack that, Chris. But um, so maybe, Em, if we go to the next slide, I think it talks about us as Fremantle versus Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, so as, as Chris was saying, in, so our clinical years are the same in Sydney in terms of their year three and year four, but in um, Fremantle and, and Perth, you actually rotate between our public and private hospitals and you do different rotations, which will um, is on a later slide. Um, so it's a slightly different setup than, than Sydney, but there's still you still get the same exposure to the clinical medicine um, through different disciplines. I don't know, Chris, if you wanted to add anything from the Sydney on this slide, or we'll just go to the next one. Uh, yeah, well, I think one of the um, questions that I saw on an FAQ document that I was sent earlier is um, around, uh, do I have to travel to go to my clinical placement? How far away are they? Um, in Sydney, it is a bit of a mixed bag. So if you're staying at one of our clinical schools in the Sydney sort of metropolitan sort of general area, you don't necessarily have to move. But if you're out at Hawkesbury, you might find you have the quite a long commute to get to your clinical school in the morning. But it's not um, it's not like a 12 hour trip, but you might be commuting for a couple of hours each way if you are some distance away from it. Sydney is quite a big sort of sprawled out space. Um, obviously, the Melbourne Clinical School, it's in a different city, uh, in a different state in the country. And so you would obviously have to travel to and probably relocate into state if you were going to go to that clinical school. And these are some of the clinical disciplines uh, that you do uh, rotations in. These aren't uh, electives. These are rotations that you are sort of required to have uh, exposure in as part of the accreditation of your degree and as us as a medical program. And so medicine uh, is a very generic label, but it covers that, I believe Paul can correct me if I'm wrong, but that more internal medicine style of uh, sort of care. And it covers things like, um, you know, as I said before, oncology or endocrinology or all sorts of stuff. Surgery, obviously, um, but that also has obviously a number of sub-disciplines like orthopedic surgery is a common one that I hear about. We get some psychiatry rotations, and I know that's something that uh, Canadian students uh, uh, require as part of their experience is a bit of experience with uh, psychiatric uh, clinical rotations. We have pediatrics, obviously there's GP placements, obstetrics and gynecology, anesthetics and ICU. The ICU rotations are uh, very intense. They can be very long hours, but they're also very interesting. So students, I don't think, complain too much about the long hours there. And then we have uh, opportunities to go um, and have some rural experiences. And then we have those community rotations. Right. Is there anything you'd like to add there, Paul? Uh, no, I think that, that covers it. They're pretty much the same on both sides of the country. Yeah. And these are like standard elements of Australian medical education. Like this is what you need to be exposed to. These are the things you need experience in. And so uh, this is sort of what we work very hard to make sure all of our students are getting quality placements across the various clinical sites that we have relationships with. So both the Sydney and Fremantle uh, programs have our research capstone project. Uh, previously, they've been two sort of separate projects administered separately. It's becoming a new sort of unified thing. 
but the shape of the research project isn't changing tremendously. And so if, uh, if you hear about, oh, it's um, being turned from two different types of thing into one type of thing, really the, uh, the core concept and the core sort of training pathway is pretty stable. Uh, what we are trying to do with the research program is equip students from all sorts of backgrounds, whether they have previous uh, research experience or not, to be able to engage with and undertake research in a way that is going to be useful to, to them going forward, both in a clinical setting and or in a um, uh, research setting where they might be doing research um, in their own hospital or as part of like further learning as part of their accreditation in some sort of uh, specialty. And so in the foundation years, primarily focus on the research training, on getting, making sure everybody's research skills are at the appropriate level, choosing a research theme, choosing a, um, a topic and a question, finding perhaps partners uh, to research with. And then in the later stages of the program, uh, you uh, move on to actually conducting that research and writing it up. It's not a massive uh, piece of work. It's not PhD length. It's more equivalent to our uh, honors uh, thesis in length, but it is about sort of developing those skills that are going to serve you in your clinical career. Uh, thanks, M. In Sydney, so far, it's been called the Applied Research Project. It'll probably get a new name very soon, but the core elements aren't going to change too much. And so far, you've been able to pick uh, sort of like your research into one of a few sort of themes, they're called, or streams of inquiry that more or less map to the disciplines that our teaching focuses on as well. So we've got the basic science, we've got our our clinical research. We've got public population and public health, which is the one closest to my heart. Uh, personal and professional development, bioethics, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health, rural health, primary care and prevention, medical uh, leadership and health policy, and medical education. So there's quite a range of broad themes within which you can find your own project and find your own uh, sort of area of interest that you want to um, push further with. <clears throat> 